What's up, Five Stripe fans? Welcome to a very special episode of 90 on Peachtree. Elaine United grabbed a big win last night, a comeback 2-1 win over Inter-Miami with Luis and Joseph both scoring in the second half to give Atlanta a much-needed win in their playoff push. Now they only have three matches left. And today, big surprise, big treat, we're going to be joined by Kevin Egan, the team's play-by-play voice on Valley Sports Southeast, Valley Sports South. You all know Kevin. He really doesn't need any more of an introduction. And so he was so kind to, to stop by for an interview with us. And that's what today's episode is going to be. And right before we get to the interview, remember this video is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the simplest fantasy sports game on the market, and it's simple and easy to win. You can pick two to five players and win up to 10 times on any entry. It's slick and easy to use, and you can find Prize Picks on both the App Store and Google Play. And if you sign up using code ASU, that's ASU for Atlanta Sports Unlimited. Prize picks will match your initial deposit 100% up to $100. And he's a man who really needs no intro. Like I said, you all know him. So Kevin and I talk about Atlanta United's match last night, their playoff push, the impact of Gonzalo Pineda, and get into to some fun Halloween questions as well. Here's my interview with Kevin. Kevin Egan, welcome to 90 on Peachtree. Absolute pleasure, Corey. Delighted. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. So just wanted to get your, your thoughts on last night's match. A nice comeback win for Atlanta United, two big second half goals and continuing to, to push for that, that playoff spot. Yeah. On, on one hand, look at the electric atmosphere from the, from the 17s. The players showed great heart, determination. They responded uh, trailing at halftime. The team hadn't won a game from a losing position when they, when they conceded the first goal in a game yet this season, they hadn't won a game when they trailed the halftime this season. So to go and do that for a first time here, which is now three games to go in the regular season was huge for the character and the team building side of things on a negative though, the team conceded way too many chances against the side that ranks lowest in the league in XG against the side that have really struggled, especially against teams in playoff positions this season. So when you're looking at Gonzalo Higuain, who, who has been a world-class player, I say that, that albeit he's been a world-class player, when you see him breaking in one-on-one with Guzan after just a few minutes or a guilt edge chance that he misses or Guzan saves rather um, from three or four yards, you question why a side that has been good defensively, that Gonzalo Pineda looks set on this three-man back line with the two wing backs, why they're giving up those big-time chances, that's a concern. Do you think that's just maybe not taking Miami lightly because they're, they're lower in the standings, maybe being a little too overhyped to do too much to get a win, or you just think it's kind of a, a random thing? I actually think it, it can be a domino effect at time, times to Santiago Sosa being missing last night was huge. Um, at moments, especially in the first half, I felt that the team, the, the team didn't value, not value is not the right word to use, but didn't take care of the ball well enough. Um, under duress sometimes, Franco Ibarra, Mateus Rosetto, just under that little bit more pressure um, than they would like to be, coughing up possession. And that can't happen. Then that puts your back line, which may be in positions to receive the ball. Your center backs, Robinson and Walks, could go really wide, getting ready to receive the ball. All of a sudden, you may lose the ball, and then an Iguain could be could be sprung in. So uh, taking care of the football has to be uh, paramount importance. And uh, last night, giving the ball away was an issue, especially in that first half, against a tenacious Miami side that it was live or die for them. Uh, that's what Gonzalo Pineda said before the game. He said, this should be a desperate team that we're facing. And he expected a street fight. And that's exactly what the team got. So Miami have a lot of talented players. Um, certainly do. But th- they've been disjointed this season. They've had two different streaks of losing six games on the bounce. I mean, that's something crazy. Uh, yet they still had a playoff opportunity last night. That says a lot more about Major League Soccer, I think, uh, and the Eastern Conference this year, which has been crazy. Uh, but just glad that Atlanta United got over the line. Ara Uju, uh, you know, need a little bit more consistency from him, but a brilliant free kick low underneath the wall. Moadu said it perfectly in commentary that, you know, you see Leo Messi lying down now behind the wall these days. Mm-hmm. Why not for, for, you know, if you're into Miami, why not have someone lie down? Uh, maybe someone like a Lewis Morgan, someone slightly smaller, just lie down and protect that space. But fair play to Ara Uju and the killer himself, Joseph Martinez. Yeah, now I want to get to Joseph. So he he's kind of been banged up, obviously coming back from his knee injury. What do you make of how Pineda has managed his minutes and, and how do you think he's going to do it these last few matches 
Uh, we, we see Joseph, he looks good. He looks solid. Do you think, and almost even if he is tired, that it's worth having him out there just to have that threat uh, on the field and his presence on the field, at least until the game is in hand? Yeah, t- tired. Like, I think Joseph's fit. I think he'll keep going. But th- I think there's a difference between being tired and being as match sharp as Joseph has been in the past with Atlanta United. And I don't think he's there yet. He'd say the same himself, I'm sure. Um, we're not seeing that explosive Joseph. Uh, like, I think it goes like the goal against Philadelphia in the playoffs in 2019, late in the game when Gressel plays a ball over the top and Joseph has that explosive nature uh, to beat defenders in a sprint and then finish. He's getting there, though. He's getting there. And then the fact that when the ball lands at Araujo's feet, Joseph's already gone. And he's got that explosive speed late in the game for that big moment yesterday. Like that was such a clutch moment. And he thought he had that moment when he put the ball away moments earlier that was ruled offside. And we, we didn't get the right angle really on TV to see if that was a correct decision. Um, obviously, they looked at it back, so it must have been. But... Uh, you know, Joseph puts that away beautifully last night and he's getting closer. Joseph, you know, if you would have said at the start of the season that Joseph's going to hit double digits in goals, but at this stage of the year, he'll, he'll have only started half the games. You know, you take it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay, now with, with three matches left in the regular season, um, what are your keys, maybe a player, a mindset, a tactic? Um, that is the key for Atlanta United uh, to secure as high a playoff spot as possible or just a playoff spot in general? I think more of the same. I, I don't want to sound too generic, but more of the same in terms of the intensity and the heart and the courage and the willingness to drive forward and get an extra goal that the team showed yesterday in the match against uh, Inter Miami, rather than maybe a little bit more of that mindset that we saw against NYCFC. And it's so easy to just pinpoint bluntly these moments, like every game is played out differently in this beautiful sport of ours. And uh, last night played out in a way that turned into a track meet and it got dangerous. Uh, And let's be honest, Robbie Robinson should score from that range Mm -hmm. late in the game. Brad Guzan pulls off another brilliant save. And when I say brilliant, it was fairly routine for Brad's quality and standards throughout his career. However, you still have to make that save deep in stoppage time. And he did it against Omar Gonzalez uh against Toronto recently and now he's done it against Inter Miami and Robbie Robinson so Brad Guzan is churning out points for Atlanta United late in the season at 37 years young um I I think the key is to be taking care of the football as well is just something that this team has been good at Santiago Sosa is a master at it it's an area of his game that he excels in like like Barco has been brilliant at it this season protecting the ball if if you know if you're not going to keep it make sure you're fouled um, and, and Barco, yeah, set a record last night in Major League Soccer. Fell 12 times, equal in Cuadro Blanco uh, when he played at the Chicago Fire back in 2007 against Columbus. Yeah, I'm always, I'm always just a little eerie when, when he goes down that often. I mean, he, he's, he's a durable guy for being, for being his size, but just every now and then I'm like, may, maybe take it a little easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, exactly. He gets, gets kicked a lot. To be honest, sometimes he goes down way too easy. Uh, sometimes there's dives, but sometimes, like last night, in my opinion, he mm-hmm. was hacked down and nothing was given. So, mm-hmm. and staying on, on the playoffs a little bit, you you have a lot of experience with MLS. Do you think there's a big difference in in making the playoffs as a higher seed, a middle seed, a lower seed? Do you think Atlanta United's thinking about that at this point? Because they, I think they can still end up as high as two, or is it just get in the dance at this point and, and see what happens? Well, it's definitely well, that's the first one. It's just getting the dance, right? But but when you're in Atlanta United's position now, yes, you're saying you're still saying getting the dance, and that, and that is imperative. Number one, get there. But home field advantage with the way the playoffs work in Major League Soccer is it's a single elimination game. So Atlanta United, it's not like we're talking about too many road victories this year. Uh, three of them all year long <laughs> um, against Columbus, DC, and Toronto. So you get an away day against the New England Revolution, it's going to be tough. Um, or, or some other teams there. All games will be difficult in the playoffs, but you want to get a home game. So that that's crucial. Um, but it's also, quite honestly, Major League Soccer is different this way. You don't ever want to back into the playoffs. And there was a little bit of that in 2017 when the team was coming off a couple of tired performances. That's mm-hmm. the, probably the fair word, just fatigued performances. Uh, from an exhausted team that had a lot of uh, had a backed up schedule at the very end of the season 
And uh, Atlanta United didn't hit form at the right time. And Columbus Crew came to Mercedes-Benz Stadium and knocked the five stripes out. You want to hit form at the right time. Now, 18 was a little bit different. You lose the last game of the regular season. You miss out on a chance to break the points total, uh, break the points record in, in MLS and win the Supporter Shield. And Tata Martino has a this coming to Jesus moment uh, with his team and he changes things tactically and they completely, really completely yeah exactly. and that and that that worked for that set of players that wouldn't work for every group of players um, and I think right now for this group of players I think it's very important to hit the ground running uh, when you head to the playoffs and that means these final three games of the season uh, are crucial and, and quite honestly you need to end in Cincinnati with a good win where everyone leaves heading into the playoffs in great form and and I, w- I would think pretty much every game is basically like a playoff game at this point. It, it certainly did um, in, in the parts of the match I watched last night. It, it felt like a playoff atmosphere, especially in that second half. How much do you think Gonzalo Pineda's experience with Seattle, even though he wasn't the, the manager there, um, helps and translates to a team that, aside from Joseph, aside from Brad, uh, Miles and Barker, really doesn't have uh, much of any MLS playoff experience? Yeah, I, th- I think it's a great point you make. You know, it really is. He, he's been there before. Uh, as a player coach now, uh, you know, Victor, Victor in 2019 with Seattle as assistant coach with Brian Schmetzer. And he's seen Seattle, you know, go from a side that were rock bottom in the West in 2016, mid season, they make a coaching change. He wasn't there at the time. He was actually covering the team as a broadcaster. Uh, and he saw them become the best team in the league for the second half of the season and, and make the playoffs and uh, go on and win MLS Cup. So he's kind of seen it all. Um, Gonzalo Pineda and more important than anything he's humble enough to explain things in a way where he's not too cocky he's not arrogant he's a he's a he's a lovely fella that that thinks and sleeps and breathes and and bleeds the game um, and just has this love for the game that's so unbelievably infectious uh, and that's going to come across and there was a brief clip that Atlanta United put out on social media after the game where he talks about that was a playoff atmosphere. That's what we want. I'm very proud of you guys. And when you use words like that, that hits home for players, I think. And I've never been a pro player. I was never good enough to even think about becoming a pro. But when, when someone says, I'm proud of you, it doesn't matter what walk of life you're in. There's a part of you will always say, ah, that they believe in me. Like, that's nice, you know? So I, I, I think the players are really buying into everything that Gonzalo Pineda wants. And I absolutely, I'm desperate to see him succeed because I think he's exactly what this club and this community needs. Yeah, I, I love that you said that. It, it just seems they they just love playing for him. And, and just like they did uh, when Rob was in charge, they, they just, it, 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 that, that, it feels like there's a connection there. Yeah, yeah, completely agree. And, and, and Rob Valentino, I'm delighted you mentioned him because, you know, Gonzalo Pineda takes over a team that have just won four straight games. And Rob Valentino had a turning point um, for any of your, your viewers and listeners that, that maybe aren't aware of this. The, the team goes to Montreal. You're down 2-0 in a terrible run of form, even under Rob Valentino at the time. Terrible run of form. 64th minute, I believe. Rudy Camacho scores from a corner. Um, and, and Atlanta United, this is good check moment. And this is a point as a commentator where I'm thinking to myself, at that moment, Atlanta United are not making playoffs this year. No way. Because the, the, the hole is too deep now at this point. Mm-hmm. You're giving away goals like that. It's the worst goal the team have conceded this season was from that corner. Rudy Camacho completely unmarked at the back post to tap home. Then Atlanta United just decided to show up and decided to play a bit of big boy football. A moment of class from Ezekiel Barco. Uh, twinkle toes, gets the ball out to Joseph and he scores. Joseph gets in a fight with with uh, Victor Wanyama, both get sent off, but that was okay. In my mind, I'm thinking if that's m- my player and he's standing up to Victor Wanyama like that, I'm okay with that. Both get sent off, sure. Atlanta United, you know, come back from two goals down, they pick up a massive point on the road. Rob Valentino takes them straight from Montreal. They go to Columbus to stay on the road. They don't go to the usual hotel team dinner. They go out to a restaurant and they eat as friends, as family, you know, as teammates. Um, not just as these colleagues that have to go and eat the, the chicken or the beef and the rice <laughs> provided in the hotel. They go and they laugh together. They have fun together. And that showed in the match against Columbus when, when Atlanta United won on the road, uh, which I believe, yeah, was the first road victory of the season. And Barco scored a brace, Moreno on target as well. Uh, and that was a turning point. Uh, Atlanta win eight of the next 11. So 
you know, it, there's a lot of key points here, but some of them are very similar to that Seattle team that won in 16. Yeah, and by no means am I going to say that's going to lead Atlanta to MLS Cup, but those are the type of things that when teams make a deep run in the playoffs that, that you look back to and, yeah. and you say, this was maybe something no one saw except from, from the guys in the locker room and, and the team kind of in camp. And, and that yeah. was kind of what, what changed everything. Absolutely. Um, okay, so you've nicknamed the front four, the front attacking four, BAM. What has impressed you most about their collective success, uh, especially given, I mean, it's a lot of pretty much star guys who they maybe could have butted heads if one of them only was having success or they all kind of wanted to be the guy rather than kind of mm -hmm. coming together to, to really play well together. Yeah, I, 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 I nicknamed it. We, we come up with it, the, the three of us really together, Mo, Jill and I, and, and I said it and they were making fun of me on air, but we we always have fun. We, I must say, like, while, while I'm on the show with you, we, like, we do genuinely have so much fun together. Moadu has been a wonderful addition. Uh, just a great human being, first and foremost. So humble. And all that uh, comes through, for sure. Yeah. From, from no, our perspective. Sure. He, he's, he's such a, a lovely fella. Um, but Bam, you know, the, the issue with, the issue, I would I suppose, with, with uh, Barco Araujo, Moreno, Martinez, is how do you fit them all in the team? And if, if, if you're Gonzalo Pineda, you've got a lot of thinking to do right now because the, the back five he likes, you know, he sacrificed Anton Walks last night for Marcelino Moreno um, to include that fourth striker, you know, the fourth real attacking piece. I don't think Moreno's that midfielder. I think you've got to give him that, that freedom, that license to run in behind and kind of be a little bit reckless offensively in terms of tactics, just not reckless is a terrible word like freedom liberty right go go and go and like look at him last night the first thing he does is he makes a darting run in behind that brooks lennon goes for martinez rather than moreno moreno was actually the better ball i think uh to give at the time and immediately moadu is looking at me saying here's an impact because this guy's going to stretch the defense um so it's finding a way to get both in um but when i say both i mean sorry all four uh, because all four are very different players, extremely different players. Um, if Araujo can stay wide and he can go at guys, like the goal he scored against Cincinnati was a world-class goal. Um, and Barco continues to do what he's doing this season. I thought Barco was immense again last night. Uh, Joseph can be the finisher that we know he is. And, and Atlanta United can go far if the right balance can be struck. And I just... I don't know if Santiago Sosa on an island in midfield is the right option, but we'll see. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a good problem to have for Gonzalo Pineda, and I'm sure he's well able to figure it out. Definitely, definitely. All right, I have a couple uh, quick fun ones uh, before we wrap up. Uh, so you've been the team's uh, TV play-by-play -play voice for a couple seasons now, and in that time period, you, you've moved to Atlanta with your family. What's been your favorite moment or experience in the city or, or with the club or both in, in that time? Oh, Favorite moment in the city of Atlanta since moving here? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I've got such recency bias. I mean, I just dropped my my son off at school. He's dressed up as a monster for Halloween, and all the kids are dressed up. And I just, I'm in, I'm in Roswell, and like the community here and everything about it is just so wholesome and lovely. And and uh, I, I've been, I, I've been so blown away by how gorgeous it is. The city of Atlanta. I love the simple things here, like nature. Uh, I love to be near hikes and parks and get out and kick a ball every day if I can. Mm -hmm. um, what's been my favorite moment? Being able to go to games as a fan, if I'm not covering the game, uh, that that means a lot. Uh, but with COVID, quite honestly, I think I think my favorite moment is just the, 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 the amount of time that I've had to spend with my family. I know it may sound cheesy, but getting to know the city with my family and introducing our daughter uh, who will always be able to say she was born in Atlanta, my daughter Maisie. So um, it, it, it's maybe not the it's maybe not the sexiest answer, like the, the, <laughs> the, the, the big, you know, night out at some point. But I'm, I'm just I live a very simple life. I'm a family guy. And uh, we we had a lot of time together during quarantine where I didn't work at all. And, and for six, seven months and uh, or close to that, something like six months. And now life is crazy. So I, I look back on that time, you know, with fond memories. 
That's amazing. That's amazing. And, and so special to hear I'm from Atlanta, uh, my whole lived here my whole life. So, so I love that answer. Um, and, and you touched on your family. I'm going to skip to a question I had. Halloween is on Sunday. Is there going to be a family ensemble costume? What do you guys have planned? <laughs> yeah. Well, we're trying to buy a house right now. We're in the midst of buying a house. So we're, we're on a little bit of a budget. So my wife, without even consulting, she went and, uh, I bought a lot of family costumes at Target. So I think we're all going as monsters this year. At least that's what James picked out, our, our two-year-old. So I've got a big monster costume that I tried on the other day that I'll happily, I'll happily wear. I was Buddy the Elf last year. Like, uh, I'll be the family clown, no problem. Um, but nothing too extravagant from what I can tell. I might try and upgrade my monster costume, though, because it's a bit flimsy. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. That's beautiful. Okay, uh, last one before you go, and I, I had this ready to go uh, before Waffle House came in and came into the news with the Brave series um, so much these last couple of weeks. What is your go-to Waffle House order? Oh man, uh, I I love the American bacon. This is a this is a big debate amongst people. Uh, a lot of the people that would you know would move here from whether it's Canada, whether it's Ireland, England, Australia. They don't like American bacon. <laughs> I love American bacon. I think American bacon's way nicer than what we have in Ireland or in Canada. Irish bacon is very similar to Canadian bacon. It's like a thicker cut. Uh, and I just love the crispy American bacon. So for me, if I'm going to Waffle House, I'm, I'm getting some pancakes, some crispy bacon, a uh, couple of over easy eggs, a bit of maple syrup. And Bob's your uncle, Mary's your auntie. They're off to the races. <laughs> Amazing. I'm going to put your lower third. Kevin Egan loves American bacon. Yeah. And that's going to, that's going to be it. <laughs> it's true. I'm not going to lie. What's your order? Um, I, I go with the all-star special waffle, hash browns, bacon, um, and some toast. And then I'll, I'll do eggs either over easy or scrambled, depending on how I feel with, with some coffee. Very nice. Very nice. Black coffee. Always. Always. Yeah, that's the order. Amazing. Uh, Kevin, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Um, it, it's been a pleasure talking to you for, for these 20 minutes. I really, really appreciate you coming on. Is there anything you want to say uh, before we finish up? I just want to say that you're doing a great job, honestly. And uh, I'm going to remember your name. I'm going to be following you and, and following your progress in the industry. Keep up the great work. And um, it's a fun industry in broadcasting. I, I, it's a ruthless, grueling uh, industry. But you know what? just make the most of it and have fun and, and be good to people along the way. And it's uh, it's one you'll enjoy. So Corey, I wish you the very best and thanks so much for having me on. Thank you, Kevin. Kevin, thank you so much again for joining us here on 90 on Petrie. And you guys all know where to find Kevin. He'll be on the call for each of the final three matches of the regular season, starting Saturday night at 6 PM when the five stripes host Toronto, and they'll be done right in time for the start of the Braves game that night as well. So that's perfect. I hope everyone enjoys that match. I hope everyone enjoys the Braves World Series games coming up. Hopefully, by next week's episode, we will be celebrating as a World Series champion team and looking to boost Atlanta United into the playoffs as well. I am Corey Knapp. We will see you all next week on 90 on Peachtree.